Hey guys, this is basically a rework of the video that I retracted at 23rd April of 2017. Since I was not particularly happy from it with uh, from the start and your response implied that you weren't all that happy with it either. So we tackle today the Antifa and what they are regarding to the whole show series in my eyes. And if we do that, we can then revisit the uh, whole topic of horse shoes theory finally and can do some comments to the misunderstandings that came up. A link to the basic video is in the description or over here in the card section. If you haven't seen it, check it out. First thing, the horseshoe theory is not a theory, it's an illustration and this is something that is really worth repeating. You can't say that the Arcosinus of Antifa is a neo-Nazi or that the uh, Sinus of Antifa divided by two is a skeptic or something like that. It doesn't work that way. It's just a method to illustrate that within an area of conflict, whatever this is, that has two opposing poles, there is a center that's a result of the poles that is between the two poles. In politics, we label these poles very often left and right. And of course, I can't repeat this often enough, Pushing the wholeness of politics in a line is silly. Of course, you don't get an argument from me there. I said this before, I say it again, it's silly. You can add another axis and then you enter the realm of the political compass. And this gives you more information, but still, it doesn't tell you the whole story. You can then, of course, add another axis and again and again and again. But at least after the third axis, it becomes really hard to wrap your head around that. You see, every illustration is an illustration. And every illustration is kind of a shadow. You lose information. And that's normal. That's the reason that you should take a look to everything from as many angles as you can. Take a look to this picture and imagine that you have only two of these shadows, or even if you have three. And yes, it's uh, a cover of one of my favorite books, Gödel Schabach. If you're into mathematics, I highly recommend it. So, however, imagine that you have only the shadows. And let's say you have all three. Could you reconstruct a 3D body in the center in your brain, right here, right now? Some of you might, a lot of you can't. And that's okay. What you have to take away from that is that the thing in the middle draws a shadow based on, on the uh, direction. If you turn it or if you turn your point of view, the shadow looks different. So, okay, the horseshoe theory. We say it, we label uh, it normally left and right and center. But you can label it in whatever way you want. Let's go away from politics to understand that and let's go away from it as far as possible. Let's view the horseshoe theory in regards to Star Trek fans, Star Wars fans and the guys in between who don't care for it. From the perspective of the Trekkie, the Star Wars fan has of course nothing to do with them and the other side, the Star Wars fan, they will agree to that. And they will bring up thousands of reasons why they have nothing in common with each other. But the normies in the center, they might say, yeah, yeah, this, this cheesy sci-fi fans, they're all the same. And from their perspective, they're right. The fangirls down here on the other, sand, uh, on the other way will say that the normies in the centers are basically the same because they don't care for sci-fi and that's what it's all about in this regards. So, do you think that those two girls in the center think that they are the same? Well, no. In this particular case, they are very different regarding immigration politics in Germany. And let's say, in this case, the two fangirls would be centrists. <laughs> it always depends on what you are talking about. You say I stated in my original video that the Antifa and the brown shirts attract the same kind of people. And this was one of the things I worded too short and in a misleading way. First, there is not one reason to join the Antifa. There are several reasons. Some of them just want to bring home Nazi scalps, other one just to fight for the right thing, other think they are on the right side of history, the next is there because his friend is there and so on and so on. There are thousands of reasons. 
But to understand what I meant with this above, that the brown shirts attract, uh, are attracted by the same thing as the Antifa, imagine a red triangle and a blue triangle. You see, a red triangle is clearly not a blue triangle because they are completely different, isn't it? Now add a red square. Compared to the red square, the triangles are now obviously similar in at least one way because they all have three edges, the square is different. Now add a blue circle. Now the three bodies with the edges seem connected because they all have edges, but the last one has no edges. But now you can say, ah, you can, we can sort them by color because there are blue ones and red ones. Now add a square. Things become uh, similar if you compare them with something that is different. So is the Antifa from 1932 the same Antifa as it is today? Do they the same things like trashing trash cans? Not really. Is the Antifa in Germany the same Antifa that exists in America? No, of course not. They share some similar threads, of course, but you could point out hundreds of things that would divide them and hundreds of things that would make them look the same. It depends on your standpoint, it depends on with what you compare them. You see, when Salsone said when he came back from exile that the fascism, when the system comes back, won't say, hello, we are the fascists, but they will call them differently. They would say we are anti-fascists. This was kind of prophetic and I think he was right. Fascist is who fascist does. By the way, when I researched a proper translation of this quote, I had a really uh, rough time. It looks like the big editing was quite successful in these regards. However, the original quote can be found in the book Pfade der Neugier, Portraits, 1988. And the next point is kind of confusing for a lot of people. The Nazis thought of themselves as lefties. They promoted themselves as such and they had a lot of lefty agenda. That's not disputed. The notion that they were far right is mostly a result of change of perspective by the left in the 60s. They changed the Nazis from an example of the left, because they wanted or won't not be associated with them, to now they are not really left, to hey they are right, to they are the arch enemy. And this is something I haven't clarified in my first video and this was a big mistake. They sold themselves as left. Were they left? No, not really. But they weren't uh, right either. Uh, you see, if I sell you a truck as a sport car and you buy it as a sport car and we put the word sport car in the contract and all these things, is it then a sport car? Well, it depends, isn't it? If you are someone who wants to live in a free democratic society and you look out of the window and see people run in circles, uniformed and chanting, crush democracy, crush democracy. Do you really think <laughs> that you, you would care about the point of view of these people? They're the same for, for you. That's people who want to crush democracy. And again, to get some distance, imagine people are marching down the streets and the one are self-proclaimed followers of the Dalai Lama and want to build a Buddhist state, while the other side is self-proclaimed followers of the Panchen Lama and march around and want a Buddhist state. Do you think that I care that these people hate each other and that they say they have nothing to do with each other? Take whatever group you want, it's always the same. The center is not homogeneous, it's just a part of society that is opposed to the radical elements. It's a result of not being part of, the, of these radical elements. And yeah, I have to bring it up again. The SA and the SS were different branches of Nazism and one side demolished the other side in the Night of Long Knives. The SA and the SS were on opposing sides of the horseshoe, if nothing else existed anymore. So what now with Antifa? Well again, let's go back in history. That's a poster from the Social Democrats in 1932 or 3, I don't know. Uh, here they state their enemies, the crown, the Nazis and the communists. For them, they are the same in the regard that they hate them and all these other hated the Social Democrats, of course. So 
why use the whole show theory then if it just confuses people? Well, I think it's a good tool to show that even if you see yourself as the complete opposite of something, and a lot of people in politics see them in some way like that and say, I'm completely different to this and that. Others might see you and your arch enemy as the same thing, as the same coin. There are just two sides on them, but it is the same for them. A funny thing is the identitarian movement in Europe that brings it to a completely new level, especially the, the young branch of them. As I stated, we have the Antifa here since 1932 with times where they didn't exist, but at least since 1980, they are around and they are quite common and we are used to them. And they do more or less the same things over and over and over again. And to be fair, not all of it is violent. And now the interdictarians came up with an idea. Let's do the same thing, especially the non-violent things like disturbing a political theater piece or disturbing something else or placing transparency in the open for all to see, which is all very typical Euro Antifa actions. And they plagiate the Antifa to a degree that is almost comical and to a large degree, I think, intentional. And that's interesting. And I know I don't make a lot of friends with that, but I think that these things appeal to the same kind of people. I don't say that they are the same. I don't that they think the same and that they do the same and that they are the same and want the same. And that don't even say they behave exactly the same. I see that they are similar, like the triangles before were similar compared to a circle or a squirrel. Why does someone march with Antifa? Well, there are a lot of reasons, but mostly it's the same reason why people march with anyone else, because they want to fight for good and against evil. And with whom to march depends to a large degree where you were socialized and what the mainstream is. That's the funny thing with religion, isn't it? The true believers are very often surrounded by other true believers of the same religion. And it's always the religion you were born with that is the right uh, religion. What a lucky coincidence, isn't it? You see, I marched a long time ago when I was young and stupid with the leftists because I came from a lefty household. The influence of our surroundings are strong and we believe that we are right where we're standing right now. And this is how society works. Society wouldn't work if not two thirds of people would go with the mainstream. And that's normal. The result is we have different mainstreams on, uh, on Earth. They are all right or wrong and nobody knows. That's the reason why we have borders and why we have to maintain borders to keep different mainstreams from killing them each other. And that's okay, that's normal. That's how the world works. I can accept it. I can also understand why someone who thinks that everything uh, that is right from Stalin is a Nazi should be fought as a Nazi. I can understand that Sunnis and Sheets think that they are different. I understand that. But you see, if you change your position, if you look at from, look at from a different angle, two triangles, Look then just like two triangles, especially if you don't care about the colors. And that's the beauty of the whole shoe. It's an illustration, again, not a theory. You can't calculate something out of it, but it illustrates that those of us who think that problems should and can be solved by peaceful negotiations, and there are some of us around there, and we were quite successful with this uh, technique, seeing these people who want to use force and just force one and the same problem. It's two sides of the same coin. It's those peoples who can't negotiate, who haven't an argument, who just want to use force. It's a different thing if you just oppose them and say, no, you destroyed a lot of our streets. We go now on the streets to keep you from doing that. That's self-defense. And I think this is what uh, what was done in Berkeley. You see, Siloni said that fascism was a counter-revolution against a revolution that never took place. The anti-fascists are therefore a counter-revolution against a counter-revolution against a revolution that never took place. I think mostly 
It's all made up. It's just all made up. Antifas are useful idiots, as the SA were for the Nazis. And the Antifa is now a branch of useful idiots fighting for globalism and for the rich, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. And if they get what they want, they would end up as the SA ended up. They are bowing down before those people they thought they have fought against, or they end up in front of a firing squad.